Our second scripture reading for this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, and I'll be reading from the 13th chapter, verses 10 through 17. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her immediately, she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it to water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he had said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at the wonderful things being done by him. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. This story from Luke is one of the great stories in Scripture. Jesus healing this woman who was crippled for 18 years. There probably isn't a person here who does not enjoy an unexpected happening in a worship service. And that probably is why you pay pay pretty close attention to the children's sermons, because there's always a chance that something unexpected will happen when we're talking with the kids. And I imagine that in Jesus' day, synagogue services could get pretty routine and humdrum too. I I don't mean that they get routine and humdrum here, I'm just saying. The, The people who came to that service on that day with the crippled woman We're not looking for anything new or anything different. This woman had worshiped with them for 18 years in that condition, and nothing had changed for her. They were used to seeing this lady in worship, being a quiet participant. And they imagined her taking her place, not not wanting to make an issue of her ailment, suffering by herself. When I was growing up, we had a congregation member named Willa Herman, and Willa had a physical ailment that caused her to be bent over and a speech impediment that made it difficult for her to talk. But she was at the church every day. She was the one who did the bulletin. She was the one who ran the mimeograph machine. Remember that? Mimeograph machine. Set that all up. Counted the off. Did a number of things around the church for the pastor. She was always there but always in pain, frustrated because she could not speak. But people did not expect to hear or see anything from her. She was just there, and and she was part of the the landscape of the church. And this this is kind of what this woman was at the synagogue on that day. So can you imagine the woman's surprise? Can you imagine the synagogue attendee's surprise when in the middle of the service, Jesus calls out to this woman and says, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. That's all there was to it. Just like that, with a touch of his hand, the woman could stand up straight again. Wouldn't that have been something to see? I bet they were talking about that day for years. I think people like this story because... We believe the woman in the story, in many ways, is a lot like us. She's no one important. She's just another worshiper who came to the synagogue on that day. She was not spectacular in her faith. She didn't go out of her way to draw attention to herself. She bore her painful burden quietly and by herself. Over the years, she probably learned to keep quiet and saw herself slip deeper and deeper into the margins of life. 
and that life <clears throat> was not easy for her. She was bent over, she was crippled, she was unable to stand up straight, and yet she came to this synagogue service simply to worship God. She expected nothing else. This day in her mind was not going to be any different than any other day. You can almost see her silently praying for help, perhaps praying for deliverance to God who had set Israel free, to God who had led them out of the land of Egypt by a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, to God who brought them to the promised land. She loved those stories of deliverance. But I'm sure after the years went by, she was beginning to wonder where that powerful saving God was for her as her years of suffering went by. She listened to the stories, but had given up hope that things might change for her. As I said, she's like us. Because we ask the same sort of why questions that she must have asked, don't we? Why do I struggle so hard just to stay even? Why is my husband suffering from cancer? Why can't I hold this marriage together? Why don't I feel closer to God? Why, why, why? We've all got our own why questions that we come here for worship Sunday by Sunday on our hearts. And even though we know that God in Christ has given us the gift of salvation, and we believe that with all of our hearts, don't we still struggle with day-to-day -day problems that burden us? Challenges that bend us low every day. And we just don't want to make a big deal out of it because we've come to feel that for whatever reason, God is too busy to be bothered by our problems. Have you ever thought that? And so we blend in with the woodwork. We come to worship and, and we feel that we are pretty easy like the woman to be overlooked on a Sunday morning. Why would God want to help me anyway? Now, we would almost expect Jesus to look out at this bent-over woman in the synagogue and think, now, now there's a woman who could use a visit to the doctor and then just go on with the sermon. But that's not what Jesus does. He startles everybody by calling out to the woman and invites her to his side. And can you imagine how startled she must have been? How startled the congregation that morning must have been. She'd been overlooked her whole life. She was the lowest of the low, the poorest of the poor, dependent on others, a burden to the community because she couldn't care for herself. And no one knew what could be done with her. They saw her as beyond helping. She'd become invisible, imprisoned by a bent body and a broken spirit. But she was not invisible to Jesus. He sees her. He calls out to her. And the amazing thing is that he does not even ask her if she wants to be healed. We're told he laid his hands on her and immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. Woman, you are set free from your ailment, Jesus said. Now, just as we can identify with this lady as just a face in the crowd, not deserving any special attention, we can also recognize that what she received from Jesus is exactly, exactly what we need. We all have a need to be healed. Our lives need to be straightened out. We need to be ready to praise God when that happens to us or anybody else. It seems logical, doesn't it? it makes sense. Why wouldn't you jump up and down for joy if you saw such a thing? But then the story takes an interesting turn. Just before this reading in Luke, Jesus said that his message was going to bring conflict. He said that because of his ministry, people would be divided and upset. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. And we see it right here in this passage. Luke writes, the leader of the synagogue was indignant. He claimed that Jesus had broken the rules. Now, we don't have any rules in church, do we? <laughs> A 
According to this leader of the synagogue, healing someone on the Sabbath was work. And you didn't do any work on the Sabbath. The Bible said so. It was in the Ten Commandments, even. You know, it said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you, set, shall you do all of your work, but the Sabbath day is a day to the Lord, the Lord your God, and on it you shall do no work. Right there in the Ten Commandments, he had his justification. No work on the Sabbath. Well, it seems to me that the woman Jesus healed in this story is not the only one who was bent over. This leader of the synagogue was bent <laughs> pretty low himself. And it's amazing what we can miss when our eyes are always looking in the wrong direction. <clears throat> Years ago, my wife and I spent the summer working for the Christian ministry in the national parks in Sequoia in California. You know where the giant redwoods are located? And the standing joke that was shared by park workers had to do with some of the silly questions visitors would ask when they came to the park. They would come in with their maps in their hands and their route of uh, the directions they would go when they came in the park all laid out. And they walked through this great big grove of huge sequoia trees and come to the information station and without fail ask, where are the big trees? They hadn't bothered to look up from their maps and see the sights around them. They hadn't bothered to look around to see that they were right in the middle of the very things they were looking for. They were so wrapped up with what was going on down here that they didn't have a clue as to what was happening up and out there. The head of the synagogue was so caught up in seeing the way things should be that he was unable to see how things could be. The rules he lifted up from Scripture should have been used to lift up our chins and see the glory of God at work, take some time to step away from our daily routines and see God all around us and recall and refresh our memories as to what God has done and to take faith and put our hopes in what God would do. But instead... His eyes have been used to being folks' eyes to the ground and given the word of how far they had fallen short. And I said this is a favorite story because it's easy for us to see ourselves in this story. We identify with the woman because we all have burdens that we carry. Burdens that hold us down and keep us from being who God wants us to be. But would, we be as, but would we be as accepting as the woman if that healing was to come our way? Sometimes I think we have a hard time even giving up our, our, giving up our burdens because they are part of who we are. And we've gotten, gotten comfortable carrying the weight of those burdens. Some people cling to illness because it's familiar territory. Some people hang on because they've, been, they've heard that who they are and how they are is all that they can expect to be. Some people hang on only in certain ways of seeing God's work because they're comfortable with that routine. And in every one of those situations, there's a need to be set free. We all have a need to be set free, each and every one of us, but we fight against God's spirit each and every day in big ways and in small ways, we, we think we have all the right answers. We think we have a better plan. And we have that spirit that opposes us and oppresses us and weighs us down. But the good news is that Jesus sees that. The good news is that Jesus sees us, that Jesus knows who we are. Jesus knows what our burdens are that we carry. And Jesus calls each and every one of us just as he did to that first woman in the synagogue long ago and tells us that he wants to set us free. The question is on a Sunday when we gather together, a day what, that is our Sabbath, 
Will we recognize Jesus giving us that message here in this place? Will we accept the freedom that he has to offer us? He sees our need. He knows what weighs us down. And he's here to set us free. So look and believe, listen and be set free. His word and his touch still drive out the spirits that oppress us and bend us low. And he gives those who hear his call to stand up straight once again. To stand up straight and to praise God's name now and forever. Hear the good news. Listen and be set free. Amen. Would you pray with me? Oh Lord, you are our God. You are here with us. And not just here, but every moment of every day as we go out that door, as we live our lives of faith each day, you walk with us, continuing to reach out to us, lifting those burdens and setting us free. Set us free to love, set us free to serve, set us free to share that good news. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.